Hello everyone and you are welcome back to Jason's Guitar School. I'm Jason and I'm going to take you through your lesson today. So in today's video what we're going to be doing is the Greenfields of France. It was requested a few times and I couldn't hold it off any longer. So let's get into it. Right, so there's a few chords we're going to need here. Um, if you know these chords, skip ahead to where we get into the song. And if you don't know these chords, stick with me here and I'll show you them now. So we're going to start off with your G chord. So we have the second box, fifth string or A string, third box, big E and little E or six and one. The next chord we have is C, so it is the first box, string two or B string, second box, fourth string or D string, and third box, A string or fifth string. Then we have an E minor chord, second box, A and D together, or five and four. Then we have a D chord, which is the second box, um, third string, which is G, it is the first string, which is little E, and in the third box, it is the B string, string two. Then we have D7 as well, which is the first box B string or string two, second box, third string or G string, and also in the second box, first string or little E string. Now in any D chord, try and only strum the bottom four strings when you are strumming. If you hit the fifth, that is fine, but aim for the lower strings when you're in any D chord. Then the next chord we're gonna need is A minor. So it's the first box, second string or B. It is the second box, then D and G are four and three. And they are the chords we want to need. Let's get into the song. Okay, there are two parts in this song. We have a verse and we have a chorus. So for the verse, it is much longer and the chorus is only two lines. The verse is four, chorus is two. So we're gonna start off with the verse. There's one strumming pattern that continues the whole way through this song. I'll show you the strumming pattern and then I'll show you a picking variation you can do for each chord as well if you're going for a more softer acoustic version. But the strumming one just works fine for any occasion. Um, we're going to start off on the first line of the verse, it is G. Now the strumming pattern goes down, down, up, down, up. So if you're counting that up out, it goes one and two and three and. So this is a three, four timing. Um, so it's one and two and three and. One and two and three and. Down, down, up, down, up. Okay. Uh, so a little bit of a pause after the first down because we're not doing an option. So it's one and two and three and. So practice that first with each of your chords. Um, before you get into it because this can be tricky going from one chord to the other some people tend to put in two down strums then and turn it into a country style strumming pattern but it isn't it's a folk style strumming pattern so it's one and two and three and okay just think like a waltz one two three uh, okay so we're starting off in that G chord and it is down then it's E minor C A minor Okay, so a little trick to help you when you're getting into each chord and um, to get the strum part correct is a little harder strum on the first strum and then just four strums after that. So G, E minor, C, A minor. Okay, then it is D, D7, C and G. Same thing, try and emphasize that first strum just so you can hear it a little bit more. And remember on those D chords, you're only strumming the bottom four strings. That's the first line. The first line and second line are the exact same. So let's play the second line. Okay, so those are the first two lines of the verse, the exact same, just played um, down now. If you are having trouble changing from chord to chord and you're stopping in between, on the very last up strum is when you're allowed to start changing. So you can lift those fingers off on the very last and. So if you are going from a G to an E minor, one and two and three and, then into your E minor, one and two and three and. Just something that you can throw in to help you get into each chord. Um, and the emphasis on the first strum in each chord then um, helps people hear tone changes. Because as a musician, your ears are a bit more practiced than everyone else's, so you'll hear these different sounds. But some people that just listen to music casually 
won't hear it as pronounced. So you can also, you can always just lift off your fingers on the very last up strum and then emphasize the first down strum when you're going into each chord and it just makes it sound more pronounced and uh, people that aren't as practiced can just hear that tone change. Now, uh, the third line starts off the same G, E minor, C, A minor and then it changes on the second half. So let's do the first half, G. D, C, G, D. Now, in some versions, you can look up um, different versions, obviously, uh, and it's always good to compare different types to suit your style. So don't just stick here. You can always just go around and look at different covers and make a mashup of the different covers to suit your tone. So in some, there are people that play a D7 there, especially in some live versions that play a D7 on that last line. It's just a little sweeter if you play just a regular D. So I go D, C, G, and instead of a D7, I play a regular D, and it does sound much nicer. And when you're playing along with one of the versions like the Furies, um, the D just fits in there nicer than a D7 would. So that whole line is your G, E minor, And before we move into the fourth line on this verse, at the end of each line, you can always play the last chord twice. You you don't have to just play it once and go straight into the next line. If you feel um, it's a little fast or rushed, you can always just play that last chord an extra time. I know on that third line, I always hold that D twice. So I do a D to finish and then another one before I go into the next line. It's just, I like to slow it down in some parts. Um, it's just a softer way of playing a more acoustic style. So that is the third line. Let's go into the fourth line. So the fourth line is your G, E minor, A minor, A minor. And then D, D7, C, and G. So in the third line, it was the second half of the line that was different. And in the fourth line, it's the first half of the line that's different. And the second half is the same as the top two. Uh, so that is the entire verse. And the way the song goes is it's verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus. There's no bridge or instrumentals in between. You can always put some in. Um, just follow this key. It's in the key of G. So you can mess around with those chords if you like. But... Um, it is just basic verse, course, first course. So that is the entire verse out of the way. Before we move into the course, I will show you some picking that you can do instead of the strumming. So the strumming goes one and two and three and. So your picking can follow that. Um, you can hit the bass note on each chord. So on G, it's going to be the top string. And then you can hit a D, G, D or a G, B, G. And then pause. So I'm just hitting the bass note on each and then a G, B, G. Okay. Um, another thing you can do is add in two bass. So you hit the bass note and then the next one down with the thumb and then G, B, G. Just add a little extra in. So that's tum tum, so the top two strings, and then G, B, G for G and E minor, and then for C and A minor, it goes down, it goes A and D, G, B, G. Okay, and if you want then, again, you can um, add in different notes you can pick it any way you like that's just a nice soft way that suits the strum pattern as well so one person can strum one person can pick uh, or you can just do the picking version or just do the strumming version so it's just something you can do either just the bass note and gbg or the bass note and next note gbg just on each chord and it suits the flow of the song so that is the entire verse let's move into the chorus now so the chorus, the top line is basically the same section repeated twice. First four chords, second four chords. It's just the, the fourth and the eighth chord are different. So we're going to start off in a regular D changing into D7. Now, you can do a regular D and then change all of your fingers. Or you can start in D7 and put your pinky on B3 to make it into a D. And then all you have to do is remove that pinky finger. And that's a quick change from D with pinky on to D7 with pinky off. D with pinky on. D7. 
D7 with pinky off. I prefer to change because that's just the way I started, but when I'm teaching students and they're having trouble changing, I usually just suggest this where you start with your D7 and get your pinky in there. It also gets your pinky moving early in your um, lessons, so when we come to more advanced songs where you need them, you're in more control and you're gonna start them from scratch then. So either D7 with your pinky on and off or just regular changing from there. So D into D7. C and G, and then D, D7, C, D. Easy as that. So that is the first line, then we are moving into the second line, C, C, G, E minor is how we are going to start. G, C, D7, and G to finish. So G. And that's it. Now, what you can do is hold that G then an extra few times before going back into the verse because the chorus ends on the G and the verse starts on the G. You can hold that G chord as long as you need to um, to gather yourself and then start the next verse. So when you're finishing that, you can just do your G. C, D7, and G, and then just hold it a few bars. I just do it an extra two times, and then I'm into the second verse, which starts on that G, and I just hit that first drum an extra little bit harder, so people can hear it as well, um, and know that I'm starting the next verse. <clears throat> so that is the verse and the chorus of this song, guys. And remember that pick and pattern is just bass note, G, B, G, or bass note, next note, G, B, G. And that works well for the chorus as well. But you can change up that picking pattern any way you like. You can hit so bass note B G D. Okay, any picking pattern you like. Um, once it has um, five in it and then a pause at the end, it just gives you that little extra time to change into next chord because there are six all together, one and two and three and four and. So you can either pick on each one and leave the last one empty, or if you're more advanced, you can throw in that last note. So what I'm talking about with the one and two and three and is the strumming one and two and three and, that's the timing. So with the picking, you can go one and two and three and, and then it gives you that time to change. One and two and three and, one and two and three and one and two and three and so if you want to throw in that extra and it's just a note i hit after the bass note so i go bass note next note g b g and then that note that comes in between okay and that just fills up the entire thing so you can start off with the one skip g b g you can do your bass note, next note, G, B, G. You can do your bass note, next note, G, B, G. And then that second note after. So the second note after is just one underneath the bass note. And the bass note for each chord, you just have to look that up for yourself for now. Um, I will cover a video later on, which will show you the bass note of each chord so that you can add them into songs as well. If you were working with looper pedals or if you want to add more to recordings, it's nice just to know the bass notes. And then you can also create your own finger picking styles for songs so they sound more like acoustic versions. But guys, that is it for today. That is today's lesson. That's the verse and the chorus of this song. Just play through it as you like. I will be putting up covers for some of the other songs that I've done later on. Um, and hopefully I will create a schedule where I can put up videos weekly. But at the minute, I am just flat out moving house and new baby five days overdue. So a little hectic. I do try and um, do these in my spare time, which I don't have a lot of. So I'll try and do a schedule over the next few weeks that I can pop out a video once a week on the same day. Uh, throw those comments in, let me know what songs you actually want to learn. I'm gonna stick with Irish songs here, just Irish songs, because so many people do the newer songs or different versions of songs that are out there. But there are there isn't a great market for Irish songs, so I'm gonna stick with all the traditional Irish songs. Maybe next week we'll do O Roche de Vahawalia or Bajin Island, me something really traditional. Um, but guys, that is it for today. Hit that like button if you liked it, subscribe if you're new, and as always, I'll see you next time.